Hello. I thought I'd make a quick video, just like an about me section. I had to wait a second because I had to wait for all the sirens to go by. And I'm almost embarrassed about my face right now because it's really broken out. Well, you know, more sirens. Welcome to Austin. Thing is, I don't have any accolades. I'm 33 years old. I've got no education, huge lack of focus, a lot of just issues, you know, and I feel like I started this thing well. I'm talking about 27 years ago-ish. <laughs> like, I try to think back a few times, like, I mean, how did I get to this point where I'm a homeless guy who's having trouble holding a job due to this rash on my leg that I've had for all this time because I had this drug addiction that I really thought I'd never have? How'd I get to this point? I mean, it's not really the greatest, most fun to make about me video. Especially with my face all broken out. This happens when I'm stressed out. My face breaks out. So, I was trying to think of like, where did this, like, how did this occur, you know? So I thought back like, all the way back to elementary school is where I thought back to. It's kind of far back, but I was like, well, maybe it was that time I got this recommendation from the school district to go to this other school called Montclair that they had just built. My dad gets the recommendation, and at that time I loved school. That was like, the best thing I had going for me was going to school. I was only in third grade, <laughs> second or third grade. But he gets this letter of recommendation in the mail that his son, Weston Richmond, should go to this new school they built called Montclair Elementary. And it sounded cool, but my dad looked at me and said, I don't want you to be a nerd. And he threw it away. But I thought about it and I was like, cool dad, I won't be a nerd, you know what I mean? <laughs> and soon after that, I, I developed trouble focusing in class. And I was thinking, well, maybe that's what happened, you know, maybe, maybe it goes back to that. But really, even during this time, I had a good home with my grandmother, but all my weekends were taken away by, by my mom on one weekend and my dad on the other weekend alternating every weekend it's like mom and stepdad were alcoholics my dad was an alcoholic bartender coke user hoarder and so i don't know but i just had this cycle of going to class and being a clown because i was having trouble focusing I was having trouble making friends. I had a couple friends. I remember a kid named Kevin who got me into Green Day, you know, because I went to his house one time and listened to the Dookie album. This is in third grade. But you know what? I love the album. What can I say? I don't even know. Like, I bought one of the, I purchased an album from them. And I listened to it pretty solid for about six months, Revolution Radio. But you know what? I'm just, I guess maybe I'm just not into Green Day all that much anymore, you know? I enjoyed the album, but it's not like, it wasn't like the Dookie album. <laughs> but anyway, this went on, you know, I had trouble focusing, so I would be disruptive in class, and somehow this went on all the way through fifth grade at least, and just weird things kept happening. Like, before all this, when I was a little toddler, the first memories I have were being at work with my dad, and... He worked at a nightclub in Dallas called On The Rocks, the rock and roll palace of downtown Dallas. It was frequented by some rock stars. Um, Guns N' Roses was known to have after parties there. My dad actually had a photo of him and Axl Rose on the stage at On The Rocks. And you know what? It wasn't really a place for me to be. I was a toddler. I'd be there in the morning time usually, and I remember crawling Every time I'd go there, I remember this. I would crawl on this gray carpet in front of the stage that was gray carpet. And I would crawl every inch of the gray carpet, look for any piece of paper I could to put in my mouth. <laughs> you know why? Because I was acid. 
I didn't know it was acid though. I called it my friends. It's weird how I remember them being my friends. So I'd go in there and I'd look for my friends. And then one day, I got there and the vacuum cleaner was already running and I about had a fit. And I ran up to the vacuum cleaner and I, the person cleaning the vacuum, and I said, no, 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 hold on, hold on. And I went and I looked for my friends and I found one of my friends and I was like, see, you can't vacuum these. <laughs> that, I mean, I'm not gonna say that wasn't good honesty, but she took that very seriously. <laughs> I never met my friends again. Anyway, that's kind of where I started this thing out. I remember being there at night too during operating hours. My dad would tell me to put these pieces of tissue in my ear so I could listen to the rock and roll. I always take the tissue out because I wanted the rock and roll to be louder. <laughs> Anywho, so back to this elementary school thing. You know, saying, I don't know. Just had a rough bout in life. And all I really wanted was some stability. One day my mom asked me when I was at her house on the weekend, hey, do you want to go to court? Do you want to move in with me? Hell, hell no, mom, I don't want to move in with you. I got a good home for five days out of the week. I don't know why y'all have to rob my weekend every weekend. My dad's house or my mom's house. If someone's got to rob my weekend, y'all could have just left me home all the time and never met me. But that didn't happen that way. So one time my mom says, do you want to go to court and move in with me? I hope I told her no. You know what's strange to me? Just after that, I was in fifth grade. And I'm walking home from school. I remember it was hat day. And I get to my house and I see my grandmother dead on the porch and there's a chair up in the bushes. So it's like somebody murdered my grandmother. And the situation goes down. Fortunately, I had a good neighbor across the street. There's a bug messing with me now. I had a good neighbor across the street, fortunately. And she helped me through this <laughs> but the next thing you know my dad gets to the scene and I'm thinking I'm about to go move in with my pops he had custody of me he says no you're going with them I said well shit man screw you too I hope you burn in hell asshole I really hope he's dead now but I really hope he went on to be the lead singer for ACDC in the afterlife because well that's what I hope. But you know what? Maybe he's fucking burning in hell, asshole. <laughs> so anyway, he tells me, you're not moving in with me, you're moving in with them. I'm like, okay, my stepdad and my mom. All right, so I move in with them. And the first thing my mom tells me is, you're getting into this thing called Operation Rescue. I'm nine years old. You know what Operation Rescue is? That's abortion protesting. I don't even know what the fuck abortion is. And now I'm told that I have to go be an abortion protester. But you know what? In my stupid mind... Alright, Mom, I trust you. What a goddamn fool I was. So, we spent all this time protesting abortion and protesting gays, flying a plane over Disneyland, telling people God can set them free from their sins because it was gay day at Disneyland. Or I'm at these abortion clinics holding these signs of fetuses, and it's like, my grades at school are terrible, Mom. Why the hell do you have me out here doing this shit? This is not my priority. 45 million aborted people. 100 billion aborted people. Guess what? That doesn't concern me. My grades at school concern me because when I reach 18, I'm gonna need to, to have these standards. Before I'm 18, when I get my first job, I'm gonna need to have standards. When I'm ready to go to college, I'm gonna need to have standards. Alternative school would have been a good option for me because I was having trouble focusing. But anyway, so then I spent all these years as an abortion protester. 
not knowing what my beliefs really were because it was commanded us that we believe in the Bible and God's absolutely real and Jesus is absolutely real. And you know what? I think if Jesus was here today, he would say, man, you don't know that I was absolutely real. <laughs> How are you supposed to be a credible witness if you're saying that Jesus Christ is absolutely true and making people believe in this thing that may or may not have happened? I think Jesus himself would be like, yeah, that's not credible witnessing. <laughs> you can't verify these facts. Therefore, that's not a credible witness. Anyway. One time we went and we protested Barnes & Noble because they were selling a book that had full nudes of children in it. At Barnes & Noble, they really were selling this book. The strange thing is, after we protested it, my mom brings a copy of the book into the house. Guess where she stores it? In the hallway closet next to my bedroom. I was 14 or 15. And this book of full nudes of 15 year olds, 16 year olds, all the way down to 10 year olds, she puts it in the closet next to my room. I mean, I already had an interest in pornography. But now, I had a more of an interest in pornography, because now I could see full nudes of girls my age. And somehow, it seems like the heat always comes back around on me, and I'm like, you know what? A lot of my actions, when I've made bad decisions, maybe they're statistical, because I had to deal with all this bullshit. But when I was 16, I made the bad decision of getting into drinking. And that was a bad decision because I actually had a great job. I worked at a bowling alley. I was getting into bowling too. I remember when I bowled my first 200. I think my score was like a 213 or something. I felt so proud. But I got into drinking too at a young age. But you know what? My mind, my brain, not even just my mind, but my brain wasn't developed yet. So drinking really wasn't what to get into. Then after drinking, I got into abusing an over-the-counter cough medicine. And that was actually really dangerous, but I couldn't stop using it. I've kind of read into why I couldn't stop using it. And it messes with the serotonin levels. It causes something called serotonin syndrome, even. It was a really strange thing, though. I literally could not stop abusing Robitussin. The ingredient in it that I was abusing it's just it was just real heavy but it was a very dangerous thing to do so I don't know these things went on to add up and add up and add up and it just made this cycle to where all I could do really was smoke weed every day and drink Robitussin and smoke weed and drink Robitussin and smoke weed because this Robitussin thing had been compounding and I had a lot of pain in my mind and my emotions as well as my body. I pursued mental health, pursued all this stuff. Nobody would really listen to me though. I would tell them the truth and it's like they wouldn't believe the answers. So that put me in a different situation where it's like, well, I got to do something because I got nowhere to go and I'm tired of dealing with this family. I know, it's like, I'm 33 now, I got all the drugs out of me, I do still enjoy a beer, I just had this K2 addiction thing that went on for a solid five years, a few little breaks in it, got all those out of me, right now I do wish I had a camel, I'd smoke a camel. Hey, that's all there is about me. 33 years, and that's all there is about me. Right now I have this rash on my leg I'm dealing with. And it's from all the way back in those abusing Robitussin days. My whole skin broke out, actually. Both my elbows, my eyelids, both my inner, inner thighs. All this stuff broke out. 
but I still have this one bad area that just never cleared up. It's, it's caused me to have trouble holding a job even. So now I got some doctor's appointments coming up. That's what's about me. Nothing. And that is why I believe minors need rights. Did you know that the Bill of Rights doesn't apply to minors? So, I would say that probably most of these families are great people to grow up with and great families to be in. But that's not always the case. So what if your family's a bunch of, a bunch of nuts or weirdos? Are you supposed to survive for 18 years somehow? It's just a difficult thing to do sometimes. I don't know how I made it out of the other side alive. So, two things. One, I think minors need rights. The only right a minor has is the right to an education. This bug is pissing me off. The only right a minor has is the right to an education. I was homeschooled after my parents had this religious change and we were commanded to believe in Jesus and made to be abortion protesters. Then I went to this private Christian school where all the kids thought that they were better than the public school kids. And then I was in home school where I got an inadequate education. All this bizarre shit. This is all before I was 18. So I think... Miners need rights. And I think also, the homeless system, there's more people that are homeless now than there were before. It's a growing trend. The homeless system, it can't be in the hands of a private organization. That's like putting us all into a trash compactor and saying, go fuck yourself. The homeless system, needs to be operated by the city, or even better yet, the federal government. You know why I say this, this bizarre thing that the homeless system should be operated by the federal government? Because you really can't leave it up to every single city to develop a system that works to solve the homeless problem. It had already been done. The federal government needs to come up with a program that works and implement it in all the cities. That way, you can get the public under control. Yeah, I said under control. You know what I mean by that? I mean, establish law and order so people can experience the blessings of liberty. I guess that's it. About me. I'm stressed out though. When you see this on my face, that means I'm dealing with stress. I hope to make another about me section in the future. I got some doctor's appointments coming up. I'm really working on this rash on my leg because I enjoy working. So, we'll see where I go from here. But for 33 years, that's all that's about me.